Today we're going to finish up the series on my five favorite ways of nabbing common sunfishes. We're talking about using artificial flies today and how using these lightweight lures without a fly rod can still be productive. What's up everyone? I am Koa and this is KNFS where we anglers are always learning and sharing knowledge about fishing and fishes. We've covered the drop shot, we've covered a soft plastic on a weighted jig, we've covered live bait and scent baits, we've covered some crank baits and spoons, and finally, we're getting into flies. So that means I'll finally share my absolute favorite lure for common sunfishes, and I also wanna clear up a couple misconceptions about using flies, or these lightweight lures that are almost entirely handmade. And the first misconception we should clear up is that flies are not only for catching salmonids, I still encounter a good amount of individuals that believe flies are specifically reserved for creek or river fishing for some species of trout. However, we should know that flies are capable of targeting a plethora of species, small to large, fresh and salt water. And secondly, this one's a bit unconventional. Flies do not need to be fished exclusively with a fly fishing rod and reel. So if you're adept at using a fly rod, more power to you. So fly fishing is definitely not my expertise, but I still catch a hell of a lot of fish using flies. So I'm gonna explain some simple rigging adjustments to use on light line on a spinning reel for those of you who don't own a fly rod and reel setup. So spring is here and with the changing season, we also get a drastic change in the insect community lots of hatches, and as we know, insects in both their adult and larval forms can make up a large portion of the diet of many species of fishes, especially our common sunfishes. And many tied flies resemble insects in some life stage. So flies are an ideal artificial bait from spring to fall, especially on bodies of water that don't let you use live bait. So flies can generally be broken down into two main categories. You got your floating and your sinking. And there's a number of subgroups like wet flies, dry flies, nymphs, bugs, streamers, and poppers. Most are made to imitate another living creature, like an insect, while some are just more of an attractant, bright and obnoxious. I always have some flies with me in case I feel like tying them on. And casting these little flies without a fly rod setup is tricky, but possible. The main advantage of the fly rod is that the casting technique and the weighted line allow for farther casting with these light lures. The disadvantage of a fly rod is that there has to be a lot of clear space around the angler so you can get that cast done. But a spinning rod can be played in tighter quarters, making it ideal to use on heavy vegetated shorelines and other cramped areas. For floating flies, we want to use lures that stay near the surface. So the easy fix is to use a casting bubble. Just slide on the casting bubble on the line, add a bead if you want, tie a barrel swivel to the tag end, and then tie on a leader. And finally, attaching a fly to the line. Of course, that swivel can be replaced with a bead and a bobber stopper. What's nice about a casting bubble is you can fill it with water to give it more weight. This makes casting it easier and it'll sink the bait a bit if you want. There are many other options for using floats and flies. But the most common way I'll fish my flies is attaching a split shot or two to my line super easy. You just get a little extra casting distance. I'll even do this with my floating flies because I can still play them just under the surface with a quicker retrieval. And really for the common sunfishes, being an inch or two under the surface is actually better. Betts has a lot of poppers and spider mimics that work well. Bree Madness and others like it do well to target big common sunfishes. Keep it at or just under the surface with a pulsing motion, you'll find some fish. Other poppers are fun to use. Harder to get the hook sets with, but still fun to use. Beadhead flies are a sinking type of fly, and they're also a go-to fly for me. These are often mimicking a drowning wing stage of an insect. There's a bit of extra weight to the fly with the bigger head on, and they're fun to play. Remember, if fishing in a creek or river, a fish is going to face the current most of the time because the natural food type typically flows with the current. So just try to play your bait with the current rather than against it so they see it coming. 
Also, another way to play flies is to simply jig it around. This is actually one of the most effective methods, especially for small species that may be a bit timid to hit a fast moving bait. Root balls along river edges often have big openings for hiding spots because the current is eroding the bank. Just yo-yo the bait and see what pops up. Also, weed edges along embankments are a good place to jig flies. And remember to match your hook size to not only the size of fish you want, but the species you want. And again, I made that free uh, hook size chart for you to look at. Links are below for that. I've had a lot of success nabbing the smaller lepimids or common sunfishes like northern sunfish and orange spotted sunfish with a Frenchy Egan's on a size 14 hook. You can get some nice adult specimens. Uh, same goes with the zebra midge. So flies are fun and they're super easy and they can be very effective in certain waters. But I've, sometimes I've found that it can be just come down to a color difference of the same size and same type of fly, the exact same model. So. Certain fish can be picky in that regard, but it's just about finding what works. And props to those anglers who tie their own flies and go get to see their own creations, uh, go to work and catch some fish. Now my favorite lepamid lure that I know I promised I'd share with you for a while, here it is. I love it because it's super effective, but it's also just really fun to play. It's called the Bully Bluegill. And I found them a long time ago at Orvis. Uh, their stock is a little iffy these days, but if you tie your own flies, they're really easy to, to replicate. Uh, the chartreuse color is really the creme de la creme that I found, but what I love about this lure is that the legs offer a nice action when pulsing the lure. If you've seen the KNFS movie, The 13, you'll remember that I nabbed a spotted sunfish in North Carolina on the first cast with this lure. It, and that actually is a trend that happens. I can't count the number of sunfishes I've landed on this lure. It's just like that. It slays fish in shallow water situations for the most part. It has a big profile, but it isn't actually bulky, so it gets sucked into the mouth easily. The hook sizes are 10 and 12 on this guy, making it fairly versatile for nabbing many species of common sunfishes, even PBs and most species, and of course it works well for other species of fishes. Share your favorite types of flies uh, with the rest of the community of KNFS down below. Fish responsibly and good luck.